Everyone, please stand. Our Father in heaven, whose name is Yahweh, this is Kohan Yachanan Hawkins, and these men gathered here, Father, uh, uh, preparing for uh, the afternoon uh, class, Father. And Father Yahweh, uh, we're coming to you in the name of Yahshua Messiah, the seed of the witness Israel in unity with the body of priests. Father Yahweh, you've shown us that the, the time is really running out, Father, and, uh, and the time that, the, uh, uh, that this uh, world system uh, falls, and this house has got to be ready to, uh, uh, to take over and to uh, take the leadership, uh, the leadership role that is necessary to bring peace and joy and abundance and health is, is upon us. But no one can do a job without being trained for that, Father. And you are showing us, Father, right now, with the training that we're uh, getting here, uh, how, to, uh, how to do the job that we're, we're going to have to do. And Father, we ask that you would, uh, uh, that, uh, that er everyone here would take these things seriously, uh, take them to heart, put them to work in our lives, Father, that we may become fit for you, uh, that we can become fit for you, use perfect in your sight, and fully trained for this great job which lies ahead. These things we ask in the name of Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Way. Shalom, brother. You be seated. All right. We're going to be uh, continuing our study in the eighth month magazine of the prophetic word and the importance of studying every word that pastor brings out not just skimming over it, but reading every word okay we're going to pick up right here on the bottom of page three in your prophetic word right there okay so it says one must repent of sin and convert to practicing yahweh's righteousness first y'all can on three four through eight whoever commits sin transgresses the law for sin is the transgression of the laws. And he, I'm sorry, and, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not sinned him, neither knows him. Little children, let no man deceive you, for uh, he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who practices righteousness I'm sorry, he who practices sin is of the devil. For sin, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works or the behavior of the devil. So for your notes, when we see phrases like this, we shouldn't just read over them, but stop and consider what they mean. What do the scripture tell us are the works of the devil or the behavior of the devil. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And it says, For the works of the flesh are obvious, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, God worship, the worship of Elohim, sorcery, hatred, contention, evil jealousies, rage, Selfish ambitions, dissensions, that's disagreements with quarreling, heresies, sex or fashions of division, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I warn you beforehand, just as I did in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, also again for your notes, how do we destroy the works? How do we destroy these works? Well, we destroy these works by studying and practicing and putting into practice everything that we have learned. Now, back on your prophetic word here, it says, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Now, Yahshua said, It is written. Now, we must prove it. What exactly is written? Where is this exactly written? Well, it's written in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. And it says, So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, 
that you did not know of, nor did your fathers know. So he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. So how do you show humility? It takes humility to do what we are told. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, 47 says, these are not just idle words, right? For these, mean, these laws mean life to you, and by them shall you prolong your days in the land, right here in the house of Yahweh, which you are possessing, I mean, which you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Back in the prophetic word, it says, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, teacher, teacher, will enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, but only he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Again, Let's not just read over these scriptures. If only he who does the will of Yahweh will enter into the kingdom, what is the will of Yahweh? How do you know? Okay, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 says, For this is the will of Yahweh, your sanctification, that you be set apart in holiness. Notice, you must abstain from all fornication. Now, fornication there, okay, is Greek word 4202, and it's called pornea. This is where we get the, the English word pornographic or pornography. And it means a selling off of sexual purity. Okay? Continuing on here. So we're supposed to be set apart in righteousness. Connect that back to the title of this letter, which is to study every word. And we are to seek righteousness. Now verse 22 back in your prophetic word says, Many will say to me in that day, Teacher, teacher, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and in your name performed many wonderful works? But then I declare to you, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who practice iniquity. What will our works show for your notes? Matthew chapter 25, 29 through 30 says, For everyone who has more will be given, and he, and he will have abundance. But... From him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, what is iniquity? Iniquity is Greek word 4458, and, it's, and it means transgression of the law. And it's from 4959, 459, excuse me. And it says, transgressor, not subject to the law. Now back in your prophetic word, it says, Revelation chapter 22 says, verses uh, 12 through 14, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work will be. For your notes, what is this reward? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 19 says, See, I have set before you this day life by righteousness and death by destruction. In that, I command you this day to love Yahweh your Father by walking in all of his ways, by his laws, by keeping his laws, his statutes, and his judgments, so that you will live and multiply, and so Yahweh your Father will bless you in the land which you go over to possess. But if your heart, notice, if your heart turns away and you are not obedient and you are drawn away to submit to gods, to worship them by serving them, I declare to you this day that you will surely perish. You will not prolong the days in your land that you're crossing over to the Jordan to possess. And I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you this day that I have set before you, I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses, because you are free agents to Make your own choice between righteousness and evil. Therefore, choose life so both you and your children can live. We actually get to choose our reward and receive. Yahweh knows our works. Revelation chapter 3 verse 8 says, Behold, I know your works. I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength, 
and kept my word and have not denied my name. Back in the prophetic word, verse 13 here in Revelation says, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those, I'm sorry, blessed who keep his laws and that they will have the right to the tree of life and will enter into the gate into the city. Yahshua's name means Yahweh will save his people from their sins. This prophecy will not fail. You can trust in that prophecy because trusting in that prophecy alone will not bring you eternal life unless you comply to its written request, which is practice. And this is what we're talking about right now, practice. Yahweh's righteousness will bring eternal life. For your notes, here's another word we can look up to gain a better understanding. Oxford's Language Dictionary defines practice as, according to it, it says, to perform or exercise repeatedly or regularly in order to improve or maintain one's proficiency, prolificacy. Practice brings per this perfection. No longer, you know, the longer we, per we practice something, it becomes a habit. It becomes a part of us. Back in the prophetic word in Matthew chapter 6, 33, it says, but seek you first the kingdom of Yahweh, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. For your notes here, Overseer puts this scripture again. What have we learned since the last time we read it? What more can we grasp out of it? We haven't looked up the word first yet. We are told to seek it first. What does it mean to put something first? According to Oxford's language, it means to perform or exercise. Oh, sorry, hold up. Put that to the side. Okay, first means, and according to CollinsDictionary.com, it means to treat or consider some, consider them as more important than anything else. So as you treat it or consider it more important than anything else. Okay, Revelation 22.14 says, Blessed are those who keep his law, and they will have right to the tree of life and we're enter in through the gates into the city. We have learned earlier that we get, uh, we get to choose our reward, blessings or curses. We see here what makes us blessed. We also talk about the word right. In the scripture, in the, in the class, what, we, what should we remind ourselves as a definition when we come across the same scripture again, Overseer doesn't repeat scripture just to fill up spaces, right? It's, it's to put the pieces of our understanding according to the dictionary.com. Right means to have a legal or claim to something, right? So we're entering because we have right, because we're practicing these laws. You understand? We're practicing these laws is what gives us the right to this kingdom that, we're, that, we, uh, that we want. Okay? Genesis chapter 28, 17 says, And he was afraid and said, How wonderful is this place. This is none other than the house of Yahweh, the gate, the entrance, the way to the kingdom of Yahweh. You know, we could also try the geometry here. One phrase we could try is enter in through the narrow gate. Enter in through the narrow gate is uh, 337, 2109, 2022, which you know 2022 is mountain and promotion. 337 is woe. 2109, to be plump, that is trans, 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 sedatively nourish or feed. And then, of course, 22, 2022 is mountain, and that's Isaiah chapter 20, Isaiah chapter 2, verse uh, 1 through 2, I'm sorry, 1 through uh, 2 through 3, and then Micaiah 4 through 1. It says, here we are shown that the mountain is where we feed to be able to make it through the woes soon to come. So you see, brethren, 
when, when we practice these things and when we study everything that pastor gives us, it's going to give us the ammunition that we need to get past what's coming here in a little while. The deception, as you heard this morning, is going to be great. And if we don't have what pastor is teaching us in our minds, right, we're not going to be able to get past the deception because it's going to be great. It said if it wasn't for the deception, the very elect would be also deceived. So this is how it's important for us to really grasp what, what pastor is saying and put it into practice because if we don't put it into practice, we're going to be coming up lacking. Not to saying that you're going to sin intentionally is what I'm trying to say. Don't, try, don't sin intentionally. If we're practicing something, that means we are striving. We make mistakes, we repent, and we convert, and then we keep moving forward. And that's what's most important is moving forward, you see. And by moving forward is we put the books of Israel in our minds. We keep studying and studying and studying so we can keep this oil in ourselves so we don't find ourselves lacking in any way. Because the scripture says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. You see, we have to be perfect in keeping these laws. We have to destroy the behavior and the works of Satan, which is all the stuff that we just read in, in Galatians chapter 5. You understand? So by doing that, we're able to continue our focus on getting into this kingdom. Okay? So in closing, I want to, I want to remind you that we can look up these words and the definitions and strongs and stuff like that to get a better grasp of what uh, these words mean so we can keep our focus on entering into this kingdom. We can do the gematria and everything like that to get a better understanding for it and keep things moving, you know. It's very important to do something like that, okay? Okay, brother? All right. If y'all please stand. I'm going to turn it over to the next speaker. Hello, man. Praise y'all. Everybody, please go ahead and be seated. All right, let's keep on going here. There is so much information in these prophetic words. So much information, which is why we're going through this to show you how to kind of dissect and go through these things, okay? Uh, not just to gloss over them, not just to read over them quickly, because there's so much more in there. And, and Yahweh willing, that's what these classes is going to help us give the help give us the tools that we need to be able to get more out of what pastor is teaching us here. But if we'll pick up here on page four, and again, we're still in the 8 2021 Prophetic Word magazine, we'll pick up on page on page four at the top of the column here where it says, Read the words of the great and honorable Yahshua, the prophesied one. And Matithia 4 4 he says, But he answered and said, It is written. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Now, pay attention to those underlying words there. It says, because notice it says every written word. You see that, how that's tied in there? Every written word. We can't add to it. We can't take away from it. Okay? It's what is written. Because it's perfect. If we take away from it or add to it, it's no longer perfect. Now, let's find some proof about that. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, it says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor shall you take anything from it, so that you may keep the laws, so that you can keep the laws of Yahweh, which your Father, which I command you. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 6. Do not add to his words the law and the prophets, and he will reprove you, and you will be found a liar. Look at Revelation 22:19. And if any man will take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, Yahweh will take away his part out of the book of life and out of the, and out of the holy city from which the, and from the things which are written in this book. Okay? Look at Matthew 5.18. For truly I say to you, unless heaven and earth pass away, one yod, that is the smallest letter of the letters, will in no wise pass from the law until all things are perfected. 
And finally, let's take a look here at Luke 16, 17. And that says, but it's easier, uh, but it's easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one yod or for one letter of the law to fail. You see, Yahshua makes reference here to a yod. Do, do we understand what that is? You know, do, do we know why that that was mentioned? So why does he make that? The yod is actually the smallest Hebrew letter there is. So why did he make this comparison? See, he made the comparison for a reason. He made the comparison for a reason. Just as the scribes, just as the scribes were to examine things closely to make sure even the smallest letter was correctly placed in the sacred writings, so we are to examine ourselves down to the smallest details to make sure that we are doing everything to become perfect. Okay? So now, if we go back to the book here, if we go back to the prophetic word here, it says, Yahshua backed up everything, every, let's see, Yahshua backed up living by every word only when Satan tried to trick, when Satan tried to trick Yahshua as it was shown here in Matthew 4, 5 through 7. Now, the word there the pastor used there is interesting, the word trick. Do we know what it means? If you see a word and you want to look it up to get a better understanding, look it up. You, you never know what you're going to, you never know what it's going to lead you to. But the word trick, according to Oxford languages, it means a cunning or skillful act or a scheme intended to deceive or to outwit somebody. Now, that should bring a scripture right to mind, right? Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 is what it should bring to mind. Now the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any beast of the field which Yahweh had made. And she said to the woman, Has Yahweh indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now you think about, you think about that, and it should also cause us to consider that she repeats the same pattern in our lives. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. What she did before is what she's going to do now is what she's continuing to do. This is what we have to be on guard for. Do we fall for her tricks? You know, we've got to be careful. We have to be on guard. <clears throat> excuse me. Be on guard against those things. If we go back to the book here, uh, in Matthew uh, 4, um, let me see here. Yes, in Matthew 4, 5 through 7. Then the, devil took him up to, uh, then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the sacred precincts of the house of Yahweh. Now, think about this. See how this compares with what we're going through today. Okay? Think about Satan's schemes, the lies, the tricks, the deceptions, the pulls that she tries to use to get people out of the house of Yahweh. Her tactics have never changed. If you go back here to the verse 6 here, now it says, And said to him, now notice, now, now said to him, if. Now, now notice what she's trying to do here by, put, by saying this here. She's trying to place some doubt. She's trying to place doubt into his mind. It's the same tactic that was used on Eve in the beginning. So now if, now think about that. Go back to the book here. It says, now if you are the son of Yahweh, throw yourself down, for it is written. For he will give his Malachim charge concerning you to keep you in all of your ways, and they will bear you up in, this, in, the, in, the, in their hands if you should strike your foot against a stone. Yahshua said to her, eh, it is also written, you must not test Yahweh your father. Now, notice, Yahshua did not deny the scripture that Satan quoted there in verse 6, did he? He didn't deny that at all. He said, it is also written. He said, it is also written, and, and Pastor puts in here in parentheses here, Psalm 91, 11 through 12. And he might not quote it right here, but we do want to go back. We do want to look at it because there are some important points in there that cover, that support exactly what he was telling us up here. It says, meaning, so it is also written in Psalm 91, 11 through 12, meaning that you only live, you only live by the every word. And if you look down in Matthew 4, 7, and Yahshua said to her, it is also written, you must not test Yahweh your father. Now, look at how crafty Satan was in trying to entice Yahshua. Okay, you see the craftiness there? She too quoted scripture. What scripture was she quoting? Well, overseer tells us in the parentheses up here in Psalm 91, 11 through 12. Okay, I don't know if that's, do we have, yeah, there it is. It says, for he will give his Malachim charge concerning you to keep you, 
to protect you in all of your ways, and they will bear you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot, so you will not strike your foot against a stone. Okay? So she points that out. But, but because the great and honorable Yahshua Messiah, notice what he did. He studied. He knew the scriptures, forwards and backwards. He knew them like the back of his hand. And because he did that, he knew how to add up the word of Yahweh. Okay? He knew how to add up the word of Yahweh. He also answered her with what is written. This example is very important to help us to understand and, and, and understand how, we can, how it is that we cannot, become, how we cannot become deceived, how we can avoid becoming deceived. Think of deception as a deadly spiritual disease. Okay? And that's what it is. Deception is a strong spiritual disease. But a strong daily dose of study is our prevention for falling prey to that disease. Okay? Well, praise Yahweh. Okay, so now, if we go back to the Prophetic Word magazine here, it says, Yahshua showed that you cannot pick one law or one prophecy and leave out the other. You, it, it's, it's not a cafeteria plan. You can't, oh, I like this one, this one, this one, and leave this one out. It all goes hand in glove. It, it, it fits hand in glove. We can't do that. Isaiah uh, 28.10 tells us, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Okay? Now, if we go back to the book here, it shows us, it says, Pastor writes, he says, every verse of inspired scripture back up every other scripture in the book of Yahweh. Okay? There's no contradictions at all. They fit together to produce righteousness at the house of Yahweh, for the training house. It says, for the training house. And then again, we see here in parentheses, Micaiah 4, 1 through, th 1 through 3, for those who will repent and convert. Now, notice here that Overseer, he, he puts in a reference here from Micaiah chapter 4. Okay? But he doesn't quote the scripture there. So remember, when we come across references like this, we need to look them up. We need to add up, we need to, add up to the point he is making. He's speaking, notice, he's speaking of the training house. What is the training house that he's speaking of? It's prophesied of in Micaiah chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Let's look at that. Micaiah 4, chapter one through, uh, 4, verse 1 through 3. But in the last days, it will come to pass that the mountain or the promotion of the house of Yahweh will be established in, in the chief of the nations, and it will be raised above all congregations, and all people will eventually flow to it. And many nations will come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain, to the uplifting of Yahweh, to the house of the father of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and, and, and we will walk in his paths, because the laws will, will depart from Zion, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Verse 3. And he will judge between many people and rebuke strong nations from afar off, and they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, nor will they learn war anymore. Okay? So that's one scripture we can cross-reference. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. Let's get a second witness concerning the same thing here. And it will come to pass, in verse 2, and it will come to pass that in the last days that the mountain or the promotion of the house of Yahweh will be established, it will be established in the chief of the nations, and it will be raised above all congregations, and all nations will eventually flow to it. And many people will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the father of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the laws will depart from Zion, and the word of Yahweh will depart from Jerusalem. And he will judge among the nations, and will re rebuke strong nations from, uh, will rebuke strong nations, and will rebuke many people, and they will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, Neither will they learn war anymore. Okay? Let's look at one more scriptural proof here. Let's go to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. But if I am delayed, I write, I, I write so that you may know the right and proper way to conduct yourself in the house of Yahweh, who are the called out ones of the living Father, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay? So make sure you, make sure you cross-reference all of those there. And that, that, that way you can see the, you know, how pastor is tying, how all of that is being tied in there. Now, if we go back to the book here, if we go back to the book here on Acts 3.19, because remember, we just covered, we just covered here, it says, for, uh, for those who will repent 
and convert. Okay? So what is repentance and what is this conversion here? Acts 3.19. It says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins can be blotted out, that the times of refreshing can come from the presence of Yahweh. Now, once again, men, once again, you know, we see here a scripture that's used many times. We see these things repeated over and over and over again. Please, do not gloss over these things. It was brought out in class yesterday. Don't just, oh, okay, yeah, Acts 3.19, yeah, I know that. Yeah, well, First Yachanon 3, 4 through 10, yeah, I, I know that. I've read that a million times. Let's don't do that because there are specific points in context from what pastor puts before and what he's putting after that he wants us to get out of that. And this is further drilling these things into our minds, men, to help prevent us, to help us from falling into this deception that we saw back here in, 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 uh, in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? It's going to give us the same tools that Yahshua had when he was presented with that deception. See, he applied that line upon line. He applied, he, he applied that, and he did that because he studied. That's how important these things are. We have to have these things drilled into our minds here. So, what else can we see out of this? We see, we, yes, we see repent, yes, we see, re, we see converted, but what about refreshing? Have we ever looked at that? Refreshing, it's an interesting word, but what does it mean? It's Greek word number four, uh, 403, and it means a recovery of breath. That is figure, figuratively a revival. A revival, it helps revive us. We're refreshed, we're, we're rejuvenated. You know, we, we get our second wind, if you will. We're strengthened. That's what it means. This should help us to understand that just as Adam became a living being when Yahweh breathed into him life, it's also what we do when we, when we become a new creation, when Yahweh refreshes us with spirit holy. You know, the times of refreshing are when we change our way from sin, from sin to righteousness, from death to life, from sin to righteousness. And we should make note of this in the margin. It's, it's real important that we do that. See how much is, in, see how much is packed in this, in, the, in this little space here, how much pastor packs in there. But it's only there. We'll only notice it if we take the time and if we really take our time and go through it. Now, if we go back to the book here, in 1 Jochanan, chapter 3, verse 4 through 10. It says, verse 4 says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the laws, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In him is no sin. Circle these words, you know, is no sin. In him is no sin. Circle that, highlight it. Make it pop out so you can see there, in him is no sin. And look at Hebrews, you know, we can kind of connect in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 to tie in with that because it ties directly in with this. And it shows that we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but he was in all ways tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Yeshua was a flesh and blood man, just as everyone here is a flesh and blood man. And he was presented with these things, but yet he was able to overcome sin. He was able to constantly choose righteousness. That was because of the study. That was because of the effort that he put forth. That was because of the belief and the trust that he had in Yahweh, the belief and trust that he had in the every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. And this is the example that we are to follow. See, we're to follow that example. And pastor is showing us how to do that. But we, it's, you know, sometimes it's not just handed to us on a, on a platter. So, you know, sometimes we've got to dig a little bit. How many times have we heard pastor said, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to put this out here, you know, whatever it is, and y'all take a look at it and, and, and get with me and see what you come up with. You know, he's encouraging us to study. He's encouraging us to dig into these scriptures and to put line upon line, precept upon precept, to take the things that we've learned from the booklets, from the very basic booklets that we, that we first read when we come and study when we've come into the house of Yahweh, to utilize those and apply those, because those things, men, that we learned are just as valid now as they were when we first came to Yahweh's house. 
They don't diminish in value whatsoever. They don't depreciate. The word of Yahweh does not depreciate. The things in the world depreciate. The word of Yahweh does not. Okay? But look at that. But consider that, that, that what we read there in Hebrews 4.15 and connect that point that Yahshua was without sin, although he was tested in all ways as we are. You know, when we think, oh, woe is me, I'm having such a hard time. You know, nobody understands. Yeshua understands because he was tested in all ways. Do we believe that? He was tested in all ways, but yet he showed it was possible that we, if we apply ourselves, can take on Yahweh's perfect righteous character. It's set before us. That reward is set before us there. But it's our choice. Whatever reward we want is what we're going to, that's what we're going to, whatever we want, that's what we're going to have. Now, if we go back to the book, if we go back here to verse 6, it says, Whoever abides in him does not sin, and whoever sins has not seen him, neither knows him. Little children, let no man deceive you. Wow, look at the warning. Let little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. As was brought out earlier today, does that mean we're not going to make a mistake? No, that doesn't mean we're not going to make a mistake. But a just man is going to fall seven times and get up and keep moving. We're going to continue practicing because practice makes perfection. So, if we keep going on here, it says, He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, remember, remember what we learned earlier. Remember what we learned earlier that the works of the devil are. The works of the devil are sin. The great deacon, he read, he, he read, those, he read those to us in, 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 in that scripture that shows these are the works of the flesh. These are the works of the adversary. Okay? Go back, highlight that, go back and rehearse those. Those are the works. If we're being enticed to do any of those things, we need to turn around and we need to flee the opposite direction and flee to our counselors. Flee to the house of Yahweh. Flee to the place of safety. That's what we need to do. But we need to remember uh, that, that the practice of sin shows who we belong to and also what our reward is going to be. What our reward is going to be and ultimately what our end, what the end result is going to be. Because in the end, when we are, you know, in the end we're going to be judged. Now, if you want to look at Romans 6.16, that should bring up that cross-reference, Right? Romans 6.16 says, Do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves as servants to obey his servants you are whom you obey? Whether of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Okay, so that's one scripture that comes to mind. What's another proof that we can go to? What about, what about Yachanon 5.29? And he will come forth. Those who have practiced righteousness will be resurrected in order to live. The practice of righteousness even if we go to sleep, we're going to be resurrected in order to live. And those who have practiced wickedness will be resurrected in order to be damned. You see the reward. You see the rewards there. Okay? So, and the beauty of this plan is that we actually get to choose. The choice is ours, man, of what it is, what we value. What our reward is. What is it that we want? What scripture does that bring to mind? How about Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 through 19? Let's read that real quick. See that I've set before you this day life by righteousness and death and destruction, and that I command you this day to love Yahweh your Father by walking in, uh, in all of his ways, by keeping his laws and his statutes and his judgments, so that you can live, so that you can live, and so that you can multiply, and so that Yahweh your Father can bless you in the land in which you will go in to possess. The warning here in verse 17, but if your heart turns away and you're not obedient and you're drawn away to submit to gods, to worship them by serving them, I declare to you this day that you will surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Yarden to possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you this day that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses, because you are free agents to make your own choice between righteousness and evil. Therefore, choose life so that both you and your children can live. You see, there's a plea. There is a plea. This 
is a plea. This verse 19 is a plea to choose righteousness. It's, it's almost, you can look at it as, as, as Yahweh begging as the witness when he reads this, as begging you, yes, I beg you, please choose life so that you can live. But it's our choice. Ultimately, it's our choice. If we go back to the book here, verse 10, it says, In this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh and does not love or does not ahab his neighbor. Now, remember, now notice, when we make the righteous choices, when we make righteous choices, and we choose to be obedient to Yahweh's law, we bring harm to no one. We don't bring harm to our neighbors. We don't bring harm to our family, to the environment. We work. We, there is no harm in, in keeping the laws of Yahweh. We automatically have peace with our neighbors. And that is the ultimate goal. We are set up to be teachers of peace, the teachers of the peaceful solution. The peaceful solution. You know, as we go through these, and I'm, I think... This is, a, this is a decent place to probably stop. We'll pick up here with the next teacher uh, the next time that we have class. Okay, but it's, it's really important that we really, as, as, and I hope as, as, we're, as we're going through this, that we're seeing the importance, men, of taking our time and going through these scriptures. Taking our time in reading through these publications. What benefit is it if I sit here and I read and I go through and I'm able to read 20 pages of this prophetic word magazine in one hour but can't retain two paragraphs, what benefit, man, is it if we do that? There is so much more. There is so much knowledge, and I hope that we're seeing that as we go through, as we, as we go through this study, as we go through these things. It's, it's, very, it's so important because there's so much in there. Uh, and it's only through, we've got to remember, it's only through the practice of Yahweh's laws that we can be released, that we are going to be released from this bondage of sin and death. And you think about what we're doing. It's the practice of these laws that bring peace. And you know what that is, men? That is the peaceful solution in action. It's exactly what it is. So with that, men, I think we'll go ahead and we'll close. Yahweh be with you, men. Yahweh bless you. Yahweh bless the rest of your day, your prep day. Everyone will stand, we'll go ahead and we'll close in prayer. Great and merciful loving Father, whose, whose sacred and uh, righteous name is Yahweh. Father, this is your servant, Kohan Pariah Hawkins, along with the men of your house, Father Yahweh, both who are here at Abel, Father, and those who are being withheld by, the east, by these evil, beastly systems, Father Yahweh, who are scattered abroad at this time and who are coming through the media that's available. We do ask permission at this time, Father, to come before you in unity with the body of priests or our pastor and overseer, the great Khan Yisrael Label Hawkins, and by and through the authority of your son, our son coming king and high priest, our most and most honored Yeshua Messiah. Father, we thank you for these classes. We thank you for the information that our pastor and overseer presents to us. And we thank you, Father, so much for the ahab he shows for each and every one of us and, and the constant writing and the constant study that he does to in order to save our lives, Father, and that's what he's doing. He is saving our lives. We thank you, Father, for him. We, we, we thank you for your house, and we thank you, Father, for calling us into this, into this awesome house, Father Yahweh, your, your great house, and for giving us this opportunity, Father, to qualify to be a part of your kingdom, Father. And, Father, we pray for your continued protection and guidance. We pray for the healing from the sickness and disease, Father Yahweh, that is out there. We pray for the protection from the plagues that are out there. And, uh, and we just ahab you, Father Yahweh, so much and, and, and pray that you continue to watch over us and guide us all the days of our lives, Father. We do ahab you, Father Yahweh, praise you and thank you. And we do ask all of these blessings in the name of your Son, Yahshua, Messiah, being seated of the witness, Yahshua, and unity, the body of priests. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh.